Welcome to the Home Business Podcast with Richard Captain Henderson, publisher of Home Business Magazine, and Sherilyn Colleen, managing editor. This how-to show helps you successfully operate your home-based business. Greetings and welcome to the Home Business Podcast. I'm Richard Captain Anderson, your skipper at Home Business TV. And I'm Lynn, your co-host. Let's care for C and get it away. Consulting is a huge player in the home-based business arena. Have you ever thought of becoming a consultant? What differentiates the top 1% of consultants from the rest? What are factors that make some consultants successful and some even legendary? Helping us to navigate the world of consulting is Himanshu Narong one of the world's top consultant trainers and author of Legendary Consulting. Imagine Stress says six pillars of consulting effectiveness that are common across any home-based consulting business. Manchu will talk about tools, techniques, ideas, and energy required to make you a legendary consultant. So, greetings, Imanchu and Narang. Welcome to the Home Business Podcast. Say hello to our podcast audience. Hello, everyone. I'm excited to be here. Hello. Thanks for joining show. us. Um, how's you're connecting in from uh, Vancouver? That's right. I'm, co- I'm connecting from Vancouver, BC, Canada. Ah, that's a beautiful place. Navy took me took me there a couple of times, but that's also kind of an entrepreneurial hub. There's a lot of a lot of startup activities. I, I guess it's kind of a you know a Silicon Valley or you know a, a hub for Canada. Do you do you kind of does it seem that way to you that it's a you know an entrepreneurial hotspot there in Vancouver? Totally, small business is a huge player in the economy of this region, and there are a lot of entrepreneurs, a lot of small business owners, a lot of medium scale enterprises that are actually driving the economy here. So, absolutely, so a good place to be a consultant. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, it is. First, you have to get your foot in the door as a consultant. Manshu, how do you write a winning business proposal that gets a yes for your consulting practice? That's a great question, Lynn. And you know, the right business proposal, in fact, starts with, if you want to get your foot in the door, it starts with first building rapport with your potential client, right? And that is something that many consultants miss out on. They don't build rapport with the person that they're trying to do business with. They're trying to be mechanical about consulting. They're trying to be mechanical about the process of securing a deal. They're trying to be mechanical about writing proposals. So the first step is to build rapport with the potential client, the person that you're communicating with, so that there is some feeling of connection, there is feeling of trust, there is feeling of that we are a team. And once you can do that, if you can do that, proposal writing becomes so much easier. But when it comes to writing the proposal, then there are certain elements that you want to be stressing about. Number one is having the right information in there. You want the right data, the right facts, the right numbers. And then number two, which is the most important one, you want to be founding it, you want to be laying it on the right foundation. Now there are two foundations. There's a foundation of greed and there's a foundation of fear. I invite the listeners to actually see through these words because sometimes these words come across as kind of harsh, but Mm -hmm. they come from the science of human psychology. So greed means a proposal that says, we'll do this and we'll make more money, right? That's a greed-based proposal. This, doing this will help you grow your profits. That's a greed-based proposal. What's a fear-based proposal? A fear-based proposal is where you say, if we do not do this, we'll dilute our position in the market. Mm -hmm. That's a fear-based proposal. Do you see the difference? Right? Yeah. And often, yeah. yeah, please go ahead. I'm just, you know, following up on one point you made there earlier with, um, you know, building that rapport. And so, you know, kind of pulling on that one a little bit, you know, I'm thinking of ways if you go in with a new client and you don't really have that rapport yet, but you have a consulting opportunity, um, you know, what are some good ways that you can build that initial rapport? Maybe I'm just thinking out loud, maybe asking them for clarification on and talk to them a little bit about what they want in a consulting relationship. And then Mm -hmm. through that, you're able to, you know, get some back and forth dialogue and build that, you know, build that initial rapport. 
absolutely that's a part of it uh, richard and besides that we got to understand that rapport comes from a feeling of commonality mm. right you're from the us and if you're traveling in africa and you meet somebody who's from florida you're going to build rapport with them right away you're going to run into each other in a train and you're going to say hey you're from the us i'm from the us too so you look for those Much common familiar. points. You look for those common points. Um, that Absolutely. You know, and then build off of those. Totally. It could be about your experience. It could be about where you're coming from. It could be about a sport you play, where you grew up, all of those things, right? So if you want to look for something that's common in between you, it could be an interest, it could be something or a background, something or education that you can build off of while you start a new relationship. So it sounds like if you get that rapport going and you figure out, you know, what they're, what they need and you get a, get some good two way dialogue back, then it'll kind of fall into place actually writing that, that proposal that will then get you into the door. 100% it makes it so much easier. Well, you know, effective uh, consulting does, you know, require discipline. I mentioned, how do you master the forces that drive you so you can be more productive in achieving your consulting goals faster? Hundred percent. I think that's one of the critical factors that enable success in any area, right? And I call that personal mastery. You got to master yourself, and there are multiple different elements to it. You want to number one, you want to surround yourself with the right people. A lot of us are hanging out with people that drain us out, that don't make us feel good about ourselves, that often would not be on the same path that we're on right? If you're building a consulting business and you're hanging out with people who are doing a nine to five, that's not the right audience to hang out with. Just because they're not on the right path, they're not on the same path as you and right. they just got a different path. So you want to connect, you want to surround yourself with the right people. So I call that cheerful associations. People well, it's, like kind of a touchy feely. it's kind of a touchy feely where you want to get in with the right crowd that you know, you would say more of a gig worker consulting and your, your hours might be different and you're working at different locations. You want to connect with people that are in similar circumstances to kind of reinforce, um, you know, that, that life, you know, that, that work style you have as a consultant. Totally. And to be able to create the right mindset because oh. environment creates mindset, right? The right environment creates the right mindset. It's very easy to study in a library and it's very difficult to study in a bedroom. Why is that? Because environment is powerful and we've got to be in the right environment to produce the right results. All right, so you get, you get yourself connected with the right group and interactions and that'll, that'll lead to the right mindset that'll help drive, you know, drive those consulting goals faster. 100%. That's one of the basic underlying pillars of personal mastery, being with the right people. Well, great. Well, before we go to our next topic, I'd like to highlight this show's sponsor, Anajet. Start up a fun and profitable decorative printing business with Anajet. Print decorative graphics on t-shirts, aprons, mouse pads, and other promotional products. A booming industry. Anajet provides an easy-to-operate system. Call 855-863-1638 or visit anajet.com slash HBM or our podcast website for more information on sponsors. Manchu, above all, you want clients to view you as a trusted consulting advisor. How can you generate powerful results as an advisor and elevate your impact? So I think trusted advisor and our trust is something we've got to understand. Trust is a feeling, right? You can't ask somebody to trust you and they start trusting you. That doesn't work that way. So it's a feeling that's triggered through a number of different things. In fact, through a sequence of different things. You gotta build the rapport, you got to show genuine concern. You got to be available at the right time. You got to build a strong track record of predictability. You got to meet your deadlines on an ongoing basis, right? You got to do the right thing. You got to make the right decisions, make the right recommendations at the right time, so that all of these things eventually add up to that final outcome of the client viewing you as a trusted advisor. So it doesn't happen overnight because trust takes time, right? We can't trust somebody overnight. But with the right things, you're more likely to get there and build a lifelong consulting relationship. Some of my clients have been with me for five years and more, 
right? Why does that happen? Because we have that trust and rapport and connection and friendship that we have established over the years. So I imagine, you know, just kind of looking at this from the from the outside in, that you you've got to, you know, of course, to deliver the results, the performance aspect of it. But I met I met the most important part is that you're you're improving that rapport, so that from a human side, they just want to, you know, they're they're more comfortable working with you and they want to keep the relationship going, and you just got to make sure those results are there also. That's definitely a part of it, uh, Richard, because, uh, you know, most consultants would know how to deliver what they're delivering, right? If you're, if you're a marketing consultant, you obviously know something about marketing. If you're an operations consultant, you know something about operations. What is it that separates the top 1%? It's obviously not the technical skill set. Everybody knows a little bit about what they're talking about. But what often separates the high performers, it's the other aspect of business. How do they deal with people? How do they communicate? How do they build relationships? How do they lead the consulting engagement? How do they deliver, how do they work with their teams and those things? Very well. You know, consulting does require the highest levels of communication. Imagine, how do you effectively communicate your thoughts, whether in person, over the phone, and in writing? And, you know, particularly with, e you know, it's safe to say 99% of your communication is going to be email like everything. You know, how do you, how do you effectively communicate like that when a lot of times it won't be, you know, two way in person? Absolutely. So if I ask listeners a question, what is easier to read a big page, a page that's full of thick text or a page that's full of the same text, but broken into paragraphs. I'm sure everybody's going to say paragraphs, right? But what is easier, paragraphs or bullet points? Bullet points. What is easier, bullet points or bullet points with bolded headings? Bullet mm -hmm. points with bolded headings. And the same concept applies in our conversations, in our verbal conversations, right? In a presentation, every conversation that we have. There are people who speak in big, thick pages of text, and there are people who speak in bullet points. And bullet points are up to 20 times easier to process, remember, and act on. So the primary strategy for effective communication is bullet point speaking. Would you want me to actually give you an example of what a big thick page of uh, response sounds like and what a bullet point response sounds like? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so for example, you're working with a client and they ask you, you know, Richard, what, is, what do you think we should do with this project moving forward? It's been going on for about six months. What do you suggest? Now, a big thick page of text version of this response might sound like, yeah, Lynn, you know, this, this project has gone on for six months, but it's on the right track. We're, more, we're pursuing market research right now. We're also talking to our customers and analyzing some data around what our customers Ooh, that's need. Just, yeah, that's just too wishy-washy. <laughs> <laughs> totally, right? So that's how many people communicate, though. Mm -hmm. And what's a bullet point version of that response? You might say, Lynn, this project has gone on for six months, but primarily we're focused on three things. Market research, we're understanding our customers' needs. Data analysis, we're looking at the system data. And number three, solution design. We're looking for different solutions that we can pursue. So market research, data analysis, and solution design. Now, as you can see, there was a lot of difference in these two responses. However, for some reason, we've just programmed ourselves to speak in these big, thick pages of text. Mm -hmm. And they're not easy to process. They're not easy to remember. They're not easy to act on. And then we say people don't get us. You know, I guess one thing about you know, communicating effectively, and it just gets lost in all this cyberspace. Do you recommend a consultant should, you know, make an effort, even if there's, there's nothing, you know, there's no real reason to do it, but to try to get face-to-face -face meetings with their clients, at least periodically, because you just, you just can't get that, interpersonal you know interaction even on the phone that you've got to meet with people you know the military used to say if you're virtual you're virtual um, should you you know try to just make an effort to get one-on-one -on -one with your client 100 percent. i make an effort to get one-on-one -on -one with my clients as much as i can at least once every couple weeks or so right. and uh, if they're in the same city obviously right otherwise in the next order of preference is a phone call, and the last is 
written email, right? Because as you know, the full color of our communication shows in when they can see us, they can listen to us, they can hear our words. Right. The second level is obviously the phone calls where they can't see us, but they can still listen. And the third is just words, which is only 7%. That's what research is uh, suggesting now. Words are only 7% of our total communication. Yeah, That's well, what we have look, at what, look at what we're doing right now with video, you know, with the video connection. What do you think of like trying to work for a consultant to, tr to try to work in, you know, a Skype or Zoom video with their uh, client? Is that something you should push also? Oh, I think it's it's very effective, and it's the next best thing to being in person, right? Mm -hmm. And it's got its pros and cons. Obviously, it's sometimes uh, uh, difficult to get these things going. There are people who are not very tech savvy, but most of the time, it's workable and it's efficient. Yeah, it's getting easier all the time. Totally. Being a trusted advisor and communicator can position yourself as a leader. Himanshu, how do you develop a robust consulting leadership capabilities that your clients will want to follow? So I think leadership, Lynn, is primarily about clarity. You want everybody that's on your team to be clear about what the path is. In fact, I attended a conference uh, some time ago, and a speaker there said something that really resonated with me. And it's so appropriate to the overall science and art of effective leadership. He said, a confused mind says no, a clear mind says go, right? And often we have leaders who are leading projects and initiatives in a consulting engagement, and people are just not engaged. They're resisting things. They are, they're not on board. And the reason is not because they don't want to be on board. It's because they're just confused. They're 100% clear on what's happening, why it's happening, how it's going to work out, what's, how, what's going to be the impact on them, all of those things. And when they're not clear, it's just not, things don't work out, right? Yeah. So I remember like from my time in the, in the military, there's all these different dimensions of leadership. And um, homing in on what you're saying, it's a really great point. You're saying the key point of being a leader in the consulting business is to build clarity with your client and other team members to try to you know, to try to get them on the same page. And that's, that's one of the most decisive factors for leadership as a consultant. Definitely. That's one of the most powerful factors. If your team is not clear on what's happening, why it's happening, how it's going to happen, what's going to be the impact on them and the company, then it's very difficult to make them feel safe. Right. Well, ongoing, you know, you want your clients to come back for repeat business. And I mean, we could do a whole podcast on this, but, you know, just briefly, what, you know, a few points. How do you deliver high quality work that will, you know, exceed expectations on a consistent basis? Absolutely, Richard. And that is definitely where the rubber hits the road, right? You're, you're delivering proposals, you're connecting with them, you're doing a lot of putting a lot of effort into getting new business. What do you do to actually deliver high quality work? So there are multiple different things. There's ideas on project management, working backwards, connecting on an ongoing basis. And that is what I call the agile way of working. How, what does that mean? It basically means on a two to four week time frame, you want to showcase the final output that you're working on and get your final clients feedback on it so that by the end of it, once you're done with your work, they're not surprised on what they're getting because that's what happens a lot of the time. This is not what we're looking for. This is not what we were actually asking for. And guess what? You've been working on that for a year, right? So that's what I call the agile way of working, where you get feedback on an ongoing basis. You're ready to adapt. You're ready to change your path. You're ready to collaborate with the customers so that you actually deliver them specifically what fulfills their needs and desires. Yeah, we, we talked about that as like the feedback loop in the military. And so I, I think a key point you're bringing out here is you want to get feedback, you know, as you're, as you're developing and, and moving forward, but don't forget that feedback ongoing. And most importantly, as you, as you're coming down the stretch to delivering a product, just make sure you get that feedback again. So there's no unpleasant surprises when you finally deliver a project. 100%. That was a great summarization, Richard. Himanshu Narang, this has been a great discussion on becoming a legendary consultant. Do you have any final points you would like to share? 
So I think that's it. Uh, there's a tagline in my business and in my life that I often go by, and that is something I'll bring up because I think that is what legendary life and legendary uh, consulting eventually boils down to. Master business, you want to master the science of business, right? How does business work? How do you generate revenues? How do you actually run a business? Master business, live inspired, do the right thing, and pursue legendary. So master business, live inspired, pursue legendary. I want to be a legend too. This has been uh, <laughs> this has been an inspiring discussion. <laughs> Mention the rank. Thank you for being such a great guest on the Home Business Podcast. Thanks so much, Richard and Lynn. It was great to be here. Yes, thank you for coming on our show. To learn more about Himanshu Narang and his book, Legendary Consulting, visit HimanshuNarang.com or our podcast website for more information. Thanks for joining us on this episode of the Home Business Podcast. Share your feedback with us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and our website, HomeBusinessMag.com. Visit the website for information on advertising. Subscribe to our newsletter. Please visit our sponsors. For more info, visit HomeBusinessMag.com or the expo at HomeBusinessExpo.com. I'm Richard Captain Anderson saying anchors away. We'll talk with you soon. Until then. Make it a great home-based biz day.